has an error and the kernel um, is holding a lock and waiting for the car to respond, uh, the complete system will hang up. Um, we have planned downtimes due to software updates, which will affect the whole system. And there may be planned downtimes due to hardware maintenance. There are, of course, measures to uh, be able to cope with the planned downtimes, like live migration. But on the other hand, there are, for example, domains with PCI pass-through which can't be migrated. So what can we do to eliminate single points of failure? So this is the picture again. Um, we want to have um, as much as possible painted in gray, not in red or orange. So what is possible? Well, what's very easy is use multipathing for the peripherals. So we can have LAN and SAN resources uh, connected via multiple paths. And in case of a path failure, the kernel, in this case the DOM0, will switch the paths and uh, the peripherals are still accessible. Uh, the user domains don't have to support this. It's the DOM0 supporting this because normally all peripherals are driven by DOM0. So we have here no red paths anymore, not gained very much, but in the following we will see that this can be a very important step when we go further on. Next thing, um, which is possible today, but I think it's rarely used, is to move XenStore into a known domain. It is implemented, but I'm not aware of any standard configurations where without uh, hacking into the tooling, more or less, of the configurations, uh, this is uh, done. So with XenStore running in a known domain, um, I have a mandatory stop if I want to eliminate DOM0 being a single point of failure, because XenStore normally runs in DOM0. Um, XenStore will still be a single point of failure, as it is mandatory for a Xen server to operate. But on the other hand, uh, DOM0 high load won't affect uh, the XenStore anymore, because it is scheduled by the hypervisor now and no longer by DOM0. So the picture has changed a little bit. XenStore has moved out of DOM0, still in red, but uh, an independent blob. The next thing we can do is use driver domains. For LAN, it's fairly, uh, it's done, but again, it's not the common case for configurations. Um, it's convenient to build one driver domain per interface card, because then you only, if a interface card, a LAN card is failing and may, might pull down the driver domain, another driver domain still is working for the other path. So in this case, the multipathing for LAN is, must be done in guests, but the net backend is no longer a single point of failure because there are more than one net backends then. And um, the driver, uh, driver domains can act as a managed switch, so kind of uh, software realized switch. For block backends, um, multipath should still be done in backends because uh, multipath at block layer, I'm not aware of a uh, standard way to do this. Uh, multipathing is normally done at the fiber channel layer, so and that's not easy to do, but with introducing a block backend, uh, driver domain, um, we have a further decoupling from DOM0, so it's l looking a little bit better. I feel the block back still being a single point of failure, but in a known domain. And then DOM0 is, of course, still a single point of failure because when it crashes, 
the hypervisor will decide to reboot the complete system, but the net backends, or, uh, the net interfaces are no longer single points of failure. I can do a little bit more for the block backend uh, to, uh, to eliminate this problem by introducing a new type of para-virtual backend, a para-virtual SAN backend. If it's working for LAN and acting as a LAN switch, we should be able to do the same for SAN, building a software SAN switch. It's more or less the same technology, but just with another protocol. So again, I can build one driver domain per interface card. The multipathing would still would then be done in guests, so it would select the driver to go to. The block backend is no longer a single point of failure. The PVSAN backend, of course, isn't either. Um, it is even possible if I have uh, SAN topology aware guests uh, where I need PCI path through these days, uh, these wouldn't need that anymore because if I have a paravirtualized backend at SAN level, um, the complete SAN topology would be visible by the guest. And if I don't know if it's really possible, but um, Building a driver domain acting as a SAN switch could even make it possible to configure the access to, uh, from a domain to the SAN um, in the uh, SAN devices. So by configuring the uh, FC, the, what is it, WWWN and so on. WWPN of the uh, nodes. So this would look this way now. It's again a large step. Um, we have only DOM0 and Xenstore and the hypervisor single points of failure now. Another logical step um, is to use stop domains for HVM DOM use, so taking the last block uh, required for the normal operation out of DOM0. So um, this is possible today, of course, but um, one has it to configure. Well, w for what do we need DOM0 anymore? Because, of, uh, of course, uh, we need it for the operation, for starting VMs, stopping VMs, or the administration stuff, but it's no longer required for the continuous operation of the server. So it is, for normal domain work, it isn't needed anymore, just for changes of the server, of the configurations. So we need to, to eliminate the last single point of failure uh, beside hypervisor and sensor, we need to make DOM0 restartable. How to do it is another topic, okay. <laughs> but I think it should be doable. Um, when I was working at Fujitsu, we had a mainframe virtualization system called VM2000 where this was possible. So the controlling domain running on a type one hypervisor could be restarted and the system survived. So I think Xen should be able to do the same. Okay, what have we to do to reach this goal? There's a lot of, well, just configuration items which are possible today, which have to be more or less made accessible to the common user. So uh, starting Xenstore domain is possible today in theory, but I don't know of any official interface just by two, uh, by doing a standard configuration to make it happen. LAN driver domains are surely possible, but um, they are not easy accessible today. So these are very specialized configurations. 
block driver domain, I think, are not very widely used. Uh, are they running really? I'm not sure. Must be verified. And stop domains for HVM, of course, it's possible, but again, uh, I don't think there's, for example, a libworld interface to do this. So that's just some legwork to do. Um, what's the harder part are the implement real implementation topics. Uh, DOM0 restart is not easy to do, especially uh, thinking about that the hypervisor has no own disk driver and so on. So there has to be some kind of memory buffering of a DOM0 image or whatever else to have something to restart from the hypervisor level. Um, I'm not sure if the hypervisor today would uh, be able to cope with the fact that a, dry, uh, a hardware domain isn't available for some time. I'm not sure if this is possible in the moment. Sun PV backend is a huge topic, I think. On the other hand, it could be a very interesting thing to do. Um, especially regarding uh, being able to live migrate really huge domains requir requiring um, PCI path through these days. There has to be some tooling for automatic creation of driver domains for each interface card. So some kind of configuration analysis and then automatic creation of the driver domains needed. Um, we need some tooling for automatic restart of any crashed infrastructure domain, being this DOM0 or driver domains. Um, I'm sure there would be needed some support for software updates of infrastructure domains so that you can, for example, uh, create a new image for a LAN driver domain and then uh, replace it. We need some support for hot plug of interface cards, I guess, um, for the optimal server. So if you want a continuously running server, it may, might be convenient to have hot pluggable interface cards and reaction on it. And of course, support of live migration with multiple driver domains and stop domains and so on might be not trivial, trivial to do. Yeah, yeah. I think partially yes, but I'm not sure how much of this is upstream or available. And I think they more concentrate on the desktop, right? So, for example, if you have a SAN PV backend and do live migration, you might have to transfer some of the uh, backend state to the other driver domain on the other host. So, regarding uh, WWPN of the gas system and things like that. The problem is you need Xenstore more or less continuously. Might be feasible, yes. Um, I'm not sure. Perhaps it might even be possible to have an other Xenstore domain starting up and taking over the responsibility because the uh, contents of the Xenstore and the ABI, it's more or less, it's a really um, small interface. 
So it might be possible, but taking over the grant pages of the guests and so on could be difficult, I guess. Perhaps it's possible, I'm not sure. Yep. So in Zen Server uh, about a year ago, we did do quite a lot of investigation um, along these lines. Um, OK. We are cert long term, we are certainly looking go towards the device driver domains for each car, and each, um, um, uh, each disk as well. Uh, one of our bigger sources of crashes is uh, third-party vendor device drivers, mm -hmm. which are frankly not quite up to the same quality as stuff you get straight from upstream. Yep. There is quite a lot of research into restartable device driver domains. I will have to double check whether that got posted upstream, and if it didn't, I shall post it upstream. Uh, we found a curiously long list of stuff that should work but doesn't. Uh, yeah, that so was uh, the reason for the slide before, yeah, verification. Uh, I'm, I'm very sorry I, I came in late with the previous Yeah, it's OK. Uh, I, I shall have a look at your So this was more that. <laughs> Pausing a domain, restarting the device driver domain behind it, and having the back end reconnect to the front end. Because mm -hmm. in most cases, all the state lives in the front end, so you should yep. be able to transparently reconnect the back end. Uh, sure. There are some bugs. Uh, yeah, okay, you wouldn't have the problem with pausing the, uh, the domain if you have, uh, when you came in late, you didn't see this. Um, <laughs> when having multipathing, so you have for each SAN or LAN device, you have two driver domains. So this would, and if you have multipathing in the DOMU, if one driver domain crashes, you still have the other one to go through. So it's no longer a single point of failure or it's no longer required to be up continuously. Of course, um, switching uh, when it crashes, it still can have the same effect as a uh, misbehaving PCI card on a native host. So it can hang up the driver and the DMU when it's uh, inconvenient. Uh, point of time, yeah? <laughs> yeah, it can happen. On the other hand, uh, the PV interface is much simpler than the interface to a real PCI card. So the time frame or the possible failures here are much more predictable than on real hardware. So the hardening of the front end regarding failures of the back end, I think, should be much easier and is even testable because you can uh, instrument a backend to stop at any point you want if you put in some hooks. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, it's the, so you have, a, instead of a block backend, you have a SAN backend. Uh, for example, yeah, it's a front end in here and the back end over there. So the protocol here is not on block layer, but on fiber channel layer, more or less. It's a kind of virtual fiber channel card. Yeah. Yeah, right. And the idea to do it this way is uh, for fiber channel, multipath software exists in every major operating system, more or less. For blocks, I don't think so, for block devices. Hmm? Um, is it part Yeah, but is this working at the block layer? Windows as well? <laughs> yeah. Same 
the idea is uh, the backend should normally crash only, well, of course, if the underlying domain somehow crashes because of a domain software failure, or if the interface is behaving badly, the PCI card. I assume that the interface to the front end is fairly narrow, so if I'm able to crash the backend from the front end, okay, I'm toast more or less, yeah, sure. But um, when it's failing due to PCI card problem, each backend domain is connected only to one PCI card. So uh, if I have, of course, a multiple PCI cards failure, then yeah, native hosts wouldn't survive this either. Hmm? Also, any remote is any Yeah. So multipath software is working. Uh, so normally, of course, it's thought as either when the PCI card is failing, the software won't fail above it, or its main purpose, I think, is to make sure that one of the paths is failing because it's of of course, it's not only a fiber channel cable just to the device. There's the sun really switches and long fiber channel routes and another uh, switch between it. So this may, may fail. So I, I noticed you're willing to tackle the uh, It's kind of, yeah, I'm not opposed to it, so, but uh, I'm really not sure how, what, how do you want to do it. So um, the problem is you could double, for example, XenStar, but to which one do you want to talk? Or are they both uh, suppose or three? And, I don't know. I um, know. Majority, uh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Um, if there's a good idea to how to do it, I'm really open to it, but uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure, sure. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, it, would be even, it would be even possible to use specialized kernel for each interface card type. I think it, this would be a real good idea. Yeah, absolutely. At DOM zero, I wouldn't mind being a complete Linux. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for being able to do the updates of the domains and so on, you would need some quite some tooling. But the backend uh, and stub domains, of course, uh, RAM kernels would be a real good thing. The second thing I'm thinking is, I don't know, if it makes sense. It just popped up in my head. Like, uh, what if you start doing like um, multiple Zen stores that are responsible for different numbers of domains? Uh, this tends to be complicated because if I have XenStore being for this domain, um, the problem with the backend is reading in XenStore as well. So then the backends would have to talk to multiple XenStores, and I'm not sure. I would keep the logic together. So meaning that the backends and the VM itself talk to the same XenStore, but yeah, but, yeah, but I have only a backend per PCI card, and multiple domains can go to the same backend. Yeah, uh, I've. <laughs> so. <laughs> but it seems like a similar problem has been solved before with uh, database availability. Because if you think about Zen Store, like a database, uh, you have there are bigger database deployments where there's hope for coherency between the databases. And the database shine. Okay, yeah. So maybe we could somehow use that. Maybe. And like, yeah. for example, maybe you could have. Uh, Subset for a VM for one of the domains, 
So um, um, I think Sensor, even uh, especially with RAM kernels, is a very small software set. Uh, Xenstar doesn't need any I.O. It just has the Xen, uh, Xen bus interface via the hypervisor. It has to boot and run the Xenstar some memory, and that's all. And I think concentrating on the Xenstar is the last thing we have to do. <laughs> so it's the least critical part of it, I think. It's fairly self, uh, very self-contained, and uh, I think crashing sensor sh should happen really, really rarely. So what about the hypervisor? Then? Yeah, of course, the hypervisor is still single point of failure, but mm, perhaps you should use Colo or Ramos or something like that to cover that case. <laughs> <laughs> so having another hypervisor, I think, you no, know, there's a lot of state in there which is required for sane running domain, and if one hypervisor is crashing, you won't be able to take over from another one. So um, in, in Mir uh, there's no one from Mirage here at the moment, but Mirage have, yeah, was here earlier. Yeah, they, they, they have a pure Campbell implementation to install that can be compiled as a Mirage OS unikernel. Yeah. And um, I think they're currently working on restartability of that, but it, it, it works now. So your, your kind of joke suggestion of, uh, of a unikernel is a reality. Uh, if, you, if you look on GitHub, um, OCaml's M store in the Mirage um, project, it's restartable. So oh, how? So what do they do with the uh, Xenstar contents then? Okay. So if I have a potentially crashing Xenstar, I have on a, on the other hand I have a potential Xenstar misbehavior, thrashing my data. So if I somehow manage to be restartable but have stale data, it's not usable anymore. Of course. Everything in this case would help, sure, but I'm not seeing, really seeing uh, how it would be done, but okay. For me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll let others uh, Yeah. Problem. Andrew? So to fill in partly from a, uh, for Anil, who was talking about some of this uh, last night, Anil has a crazy idea to make redundant Zen store work. Um, Dave Scott already has a working version of ZenStore that uses a Git. Ah, yeah, yeah, I've heard part of it, yeah. As, yeah, uh, okay. As its backing store and models the entire uh, ZenStore tree as, uh, as Git branches and, and merges to resolve <coughs> transactions, stuff like this. Um, Anil reckons he can get it to the point where you end up making ZenStore redundant by having multiple remotes. Um, and you, and you, can, uh, you, can, uh, you can clone yourself part of the ZenStore tree. Uh, he then wants to make ZenStore distributed across servers. Okay. He, he reckons he can make this happen. Uh, yeah, well, if it's working well, just replace it here and I'm fine. Perhaps <laughs> it's welcome. Right. <laughs> Uh, Anil does have some plans to try and relieve the single point of failure for, for Zen Store. Mm -hmm. Yeah, would be great. Ah, yeah, one last item. Who else would like to participate? So my boss ensured uh, he thought this was would be really great to have, but we don't have enough manpower to do it on our own, so. <laughs> uh, I think we came to exactly the same conclusion. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so we really don't want to build an SUSE only or SUSE internal version of it, and we can't. But um, if there is some interest, I really would, I would be happy to start this project. Ah, very well. Any other? Does that store have some limitation? For example, 
we do sense sense of heavy, uh, not only not only by the zero and the HPM. We also extend the sensor as the event mechanism to manage storage and network based on sensor. So all uh, Alibaba's virtualization uh, heavily rely on sensor. My question is that uh, how many VMs sensor can support and uh, <laughs> Good question. Frequently write event and frequently watch the event by Zestor. Is there any limitation? Uh, I think so. There is a limitation. It's a in memory database, more or less. So the memory itself clearly is a limitation. Uh, <laughs> what limitation you get is the number of file descriptors it's got open. I think that was the last one we hit. Uh, yeah. At the moment, we've got a thousand VMs running, a thousand Windows VMs, and they're not exactly quiet on Zen store traffic. Yes. You'll find that um, if you have a lot of Right, to the Zenstore. Yeah, we have a lot of right, and we add a lot of pairs to Zenstore. So it, it should work, but it will get slow, and it may. A little bit slow. Zenstore, you run at 100 percent. Yeah, a little bit slow. But the most, most dangerous thing is that while we do smoking test, it may have memory leak. Uh huh. Okay. So, um, but we use very old version, so I don't know. What's the pro? Uh, what's the issue still existing? Maybe it's not the install. We 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 do smoke test. Yeah, sure, right, sure. Right, 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 and yeah. watch, watch, watch. Uh -huh. My recommendation is to keep as much kind of um, data mm -hmm. data path out of Zenstore. Just use Zenstore for the control, just for setting up your your device devices and stuff, and then use other channels for. Passing data frequently, yeah. it, it's not it's not designed for, for high high throughput transfer of data. Uh, what is the uh, advantages uh, this solution over uh, Remus or Colo? Uh, Remus or Colo, um, I don't think they are really suited for large domains doing heavy I/O. Yeah, they are completely different. So Remus, Remus and Colo are saying I've got two different VMs. I want to make sure the VMs stay in sync. That's yeah, but the, I think the, 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 the final purpose of the, the are the same to make the VMs yeah. run continuously. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. It really doesn't address the fact that what happens if your NIC fails or if your disk fails or anything like that. If yeah, the disk or the, 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 the final result is. It's more or less the yeah, same, yeah, you're right, you're right, absolutely. So the end goal is to have a reliable base for running VMs. That's the thing the customer is seeing and wants to see, of course. Yeah, but I think... Um, they're addressing different problems. Um, a little bit, yes, because Remus, I think, or Colo are great for small domains. Uh, not doing heavy I.O. If you have heavy I.O. and let's say 1,000 disks and 10 network adapters, uh, trying to keep the VMs in sync uh, will slow down the domains so much that it's nearly impossible to work with them anymore. And the other thing is that not everyone in the world has two data centers uh, to run their one data center's worth of work. Um, I wouldn't be sure of that, but okay. <laughs> so in my former life, working at Fujitsu as well, <laughs> in the mainframe section, um, there were customers just doing this, more or less. They had complete mirror data center for emergency cases. Okay, they sometimes use part of the power for testing, uh, but there are really customers doing this. Right, right, absolutely. But the, one of the advantages of this kind of model is that if you have one of your network cards fail, then you may only take down one of the, some of the virtual machines, but others will still keep on running. That's that is still a useful advantage. Even absolutely. If you don't necessarily yeah. care about well, I'm, I'm going for the lifetime of all the ends. It's uh, as much a fault isolation. Yep. Uh, Okay, any further questions? No? 
Thank you very much.